Hey, it's me again. In this episode, I'll go into something that is one of the most common and, uh, in my opinion, one of the best tuning options you will have uh, on your car, and that is shock springs. So these are something that a lot of people change. I change quite a lot, uh, trying to find the balance in the car, and uh, it's a very easy thing to change, very easy thing to feel the difference, and it's a very good tuning option altogether. So in this episode, I'll go through what the basic principle of a spring is, what the what what types of springs are there, and what type of effects uh, are different type of springs gonna have on the track. So how a spring works is these store the energy in a way. So if you push a spring down, it will compress and it will. Uh, have this sort of potential energy in it and when you let it release that en energy is released and a stiffer spring will compress less uh, as the same amount of force is applied to it and a thinner spring will compress more as the same amount of force is applied to it this is sort of the basic uh, function of a spring it will store the energy that it will uh, receive so what this then means when we attach it to a car so you could think when the car rolls the shock on the outside compresses as the car rolls to the outside it will sort of store the energy in the spring while it compresses and the energy is released while uh, the spring is, is allowed to decompress what happens here is it allows the car to roll without it affecting a sort of a weight in the car so it allows the car to have movement without it putting force on the tire the best way to put it is the spring will determine how far the car will roll with the thinner spring you will have the car roll more and the spring compress more and with the thicker spring you will have the car roll less and the spring would compress less so this is the basic principle of the spring. It determines how far the car will roll when you would go into a corner. This also works as a dive motion and the squat motion of the car. And you should uh, know the videos about uh, roll centers and anti-geometries before watching this because all of this sort of works together with the springs. So the spring's job is to determine how far it allows the car to squat or dive or to roll and this we feel as stiffness we as we're driving the car if the car feels stiff uh, the springs are not letting the car roll or squat uh, and letting the spring compress now let's go into what type of springs are there the very basic type of spring is a linear rate spring this means that every single coil of the spring is at the same angle it's the same uh, thickness and the whole way through the spring works the same way these type of springs are very predictable it makes the car uh, very calm uh, and most RC springs are done this way now something that is also used in RC springs but are not as common as linear rate springs are progressive springs these are springs that have more compression on the beginning of the compression uh, but at the end of the compression the springs will get stiffer and stiffer so basically what this means is you will have the feeling of a softer spring initially so when the car is not compressing but when you're just going over the imperfections of the surface or when the car starts to roll or you sort of start to turn or whatever small movements and uh, small imperfections the car will feel as if you're having a softer spring but when you will need to have the spring compress less and make the car feel stiffer whilst the spring would compress it will get stiffer and stiffer so you sort of get the best of both worlds in a sense now the issue with this is it's really hard to get it to work just the way you want it to you will might have it so that it's uh, too stiff in the end or too soft in the beginning or then you would have it that it's not uh, progressive and enough or then you would have the car really unpredictable as the spring would compress it will make the car sort of a uh, kick back or uh, whatever but basically a linear edge spring will calm down the car you will have much more you will have maybe more trust in the car but 
a progressive rate spring, if it's done right and if it suits the setup you're running at the moment, will most likely always give you more grip and uh, more overall feel of the car. But with the progressive rate spring, uh, it's much easier to go wrong. Now there's one type of spring that is much more rarely used in racing cars. I see it in uh, RTRs and stuff like that, and that's dual rate springs. So this is a spring with two different rates. So it's it has some of the coils are uh, at more of an angle, and some of the coils are at less of an angle. Uh, springs like this are actually really good if you uh, make them right. So what type of what this type of springs idea is it's to have the uh, softer coils compress so that when you're on ride height the softer coils are compressed and you will only have the harder coils at work and then if your car starts to raise uh, once you go on power for example the front end starts to lift you will not have uh, a stiff coil on it you will have the soft coils acting on it so the front end lifts much less and same with the rear end uh, lifting up under braking and uh, overall you will have the car uh, stick more to its uh, original ride height it will not start to lift as much as it would before so this is something you would have sort of a you could have it progressive or you could have it linear but you you can have two completely different rates on a spring and i feel like this is something that uh, could be much more useful in the racing altogether but sadly uh, i haven't seen it uh, a lot beforehand all right so now i'll go into what type of effects you will have on track with the stiffest spring so one of the biggest things i feel always is with the stiffest springs jumps are much easier you will have much more bounce on the lift of the jumps. It will, it will be much easier time getting over jumps. And uh, landing is also uh, usually much easier as the springs uh, take the landing much better when they're stiffer. The car also feels uh, usually more precise and stood up. So you will not have the car move around as much. You will have more sort of feel in the car. And uh, if you go too stiff though, you will have the car really bounce around a lot and be really nervous but if you have the springs uh, just at the right stiffness the car will overall be just uh, sort of more stood up and uh, really going where you lead it to so I personally a lot of times like slightly stiffer springs uh, on tracks where you really need to have a very precise line because having a slightly stiffer car will have that sort of edge that you can really feel the car a bit better even though you might have a harder time over some bumps or have the car a bit nervous at some points you will have that sort of control over the car at all times you will not have the car sort of uh, roll around or be too lazy and uh, that's why I personally like uh, to have a stiff spring if I need to have a really tight line uh, on the track for example if the grip line is very narrow then you will also have a lot more corner speed most of the times. So having a stiffer springs means the car will roll less. As we gone through in the, much of the previous episodes, having the car roll less will most likely end up in more corner speed. You will have more force in the outer tire. You will have less roll in the car. You will have the car go faster around the corners. And as you, as we already know, having too stiff a spring will just make you lose grip, which will ultimately lose your corner speed. Now, the biggest downside to having stiff springs is bumps. Uh, you can imagine uh, having a spring go over a bump, you would want the spring to compress as much as you can so that the car would absorb the bump as well as it can. Having a stiff spring does the opposite. It, it, it absorbs less of the bump and you will have more movement in the car bouncing back from the bump. So a stiffer spring will always have uh, your car work worse over the bumps. And uh, I usually prefer having a thicker uh, shock coil and thinner springs over bumpy tracks. Now sometimes if you can ride over the bumps, sort of, I guess, jump over the bumps in a way, uh, time the bump so that you don't have to ride to the bottom of the bumps, uh, a stiffer spring might help you with that because you can have the car more stood up but most of the time having thinner springs will help you uh, absorb less of the bumps and it won't dig you down into the bump as much. Now uh, the effects uh, of a thinner spring and it's as well as well with the roll bars in the last episode this is pretty much uh, just the opposite to having a stiffer spring. 
So for example, uh, a thinner spring will be more sort of plush over bumps and jumps. So you will not have that bounce up. You will have the car more flowing over the bumps and the jumps. You will not have that lift and, and that bounce. You will have the car just uh, absorb it much better. This can be a positive if you don't need the lift or the bump, uh, the sort of bounce. But if you want the car to jump the jumps really well, or you have sort of a technical jumps and uh, where you have to time it really well, having uh, thinner springs might hurt you on that. But having sort of easy doubles or tabletop or just bumps, uh, you will most likely have the car go much more smoothly over all of them. Uh, unless you really need the lift or the bounce of the lift or the jump. Overall, uh, a thinner spring will give you more easy, relaxed, uh, a forgiving car. Obviously, on higher grip, uh, you will have the car roll too much, but generally on medium or low grip, having uh, softer springs will have the car be more forgiving, will be more lazy, and uh, overall just easier to drive. You will most likely lose preciseness in the car, uh, you'll most likely lose sort of control in the car, but the car is much uh, sort of uh, calmer and uh, slower. But that also means that it loses quite a lot of corner speed if you go too thin in, in the springs. Now, last thing I'll mention is, remember when you're tuning your springs to think about what type of shocks you have as well. So if, for example, you're having issues with the car landing, most of the time you shouldn't touch your spring setup, you should uh, focus on your shock setup. Now, you can help it with the springs, but most likely you will have the best results if you focus on the shock setup. Having the know-how, how to balance uh, the springs and shocks is really key here. Uh, it's really sort of a guessing game most of the time, but just trying different type of setups, trying different shock setups, knowing what different type of shock setup does, and then sort of finding the right spring for what uh, each condition, then you will can build sort of a view of what type of spring to run with what type of shocks. But everything is connected. Nothing is isolated and you will always have to keep this in mind, especially springs uh, having the right amount of damping, having the right pistons, the oils and the springs uh, working together is uh, really key. And also one thing that really affects springs is shock angle. So having the shocks more stood up really stiffens up the springs. You can imagine it as a way of uh, having the spring in an angle will have it, have it produce much less force. So the more stood up the, sp uh, the shock is, the more stood up the spring is, and the more force the spring is able to have. The more laid down it is, the less force it is able to have. So sometimes if your shocks are really, really laid down, you will just have to go to a super stiff spring. And that's something you really need to remember always. So uh, having the shocks laid down really slows down your damping and you will have to just compensate for it with a stiffer spring if you really need to have the shocks really laid down. That's something that needs to be taken account as well. The angle of the shock and the spring stiffness work together is just one in one. It's the more angle on the shock you have, the less the force the spring will have. And the more stood up the shock is, the more force the spring will have. And that's just, there's no ifs, ands, or buts, that's it. Uh, so that's something you, you need really need to take into uh, account as well. All right, so this is the 15th episode of season one of From the Ground Up. Uh, this will be the last episode of the season, so it's summertime already, uh, it's back to racing time. The From the Ground Up series will continue with the second season probably in the future, uh, but for the summer at least I'll be focusing on other type of content, mostly on the track because that's uh, really what I'm interested in, uh, showing how the car works on the track, showing what I do at the track, showing what, uh, what type of setup changes uh, work at each track. because. Uh, the From the Ground Up series has been, uh, for me, mostly just uh, explaining the theory behind everything and how you'd maybe apply it on the track. But a lot of the times the theory is uh, very complicated and the solution to the tracks are most of the time pretty simple. It's not too complicated, but the theory of knowing what to do in each scenario, you need to take so many things into account. So having the theory behind this 
I feel is really important but having the knowledge and know-how how to actually do it in the track uh, is what actually puts the, uh, the results in so I'll be focusing now on the summer on the content like that as I have the chance to film it uh, but yeah I really hope you enjoyed the season I've been going through a lot of topics uh, a lot of topics I really really enjoyed something I feel like uh, the com RC community doesn't really take into account and we barely scraped the top of it. Uh, I've talked about a lot of the basic things about RC, but there's uh, infinite things to talk about setup and uh, infinite things to talk about what type of things to do uh, while you're setting up your car. Uh, so this will definitely not be the end of From the Ground Up series, but this will be the end of season one. And if you somehow made it to the end of the season and you watch all episodes, I really, really like to thank you. It's It's been a fun, uh, filming all of these and uh, it's been really nice to see people watch these and enjoy this and I really enjoyed all the nice comments so uh, yeah let's keep this up and uh, hope you like hope you watch uh, other type of videos coming uh, during the summer and uh, yeah hope you enjoyed this as well and I'm pretty sure you will so uh, that's it for from the ground up season one uh, until next time all right I hope you liked that video if indeed I did actually help you out, please let me know by writing a comment down below. Also, if you like my type of content, feel free to like my Facebook page as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel and also share it with your friends in social media. Now, if you think I was wrong about something in this video, please let me know. I'll go through all the comments and I'm really open to differing opinions and I really want to just spark up a conversation. So with all that, until next time.